Horseshoe crabs may be one of the most unusual animals in the world, but they're also one of the most extraordinary. They've been around for hundreds of millions of years, and we're only now starting to understand just how important they are. Not just to the natural world, but also to the world of medicine. The real worth of horseshoe crabs is in their blood. The uh, blood of the horseshoe crab, which is copper-based, it's not uh, like ours, iron-based, uh, has a chemical in it that's called lysate. And uh, lysate is a valuable biochemical. It changes in a specific and easy to see way when it comes into contact with harmful bacteria. So it's a cheap and effective test to see if medications and medical equipment are clean and safe. Pacemakers, hip replacements, syringes, anything that's going into your body has to be tested for contaminants. So if you've ever had a vaccine, it was kind of determined safe because of a horseshoe crab's contribution to that science. Unfortunately, even though this was discovered more than 50 years ago, there are many people who still have no idea just how important horseshoe crabs are. Virtually no one in Delaware Bay realizes the value. Crabs were essentially worthless until about 1992 or three. People would use it and cut it up and use it for fertilizer. It was nothing more than fertilizer for farm fields. In New England, they were going after cod and the traditional fish, and they all collapsed. And so then they started looking for other things to fish, and they started fishing for conch, whelks. Whelk trap is just basically a box with a, a horseshoe crab spiked into the center of it, and then whelks come in and go into the box and can't get back out again. So they needed bait, and they needed a lot of it. Uh, they used to come down here from Maine with U-Haul trucks and a, a front end loader and just scoop them horseshoe crabs off the beach. And there was years went by, maybe there was 20, and I'm not lying, 20 horseshoe crabs come up. Not surprisingly, this kind of decimation of a species has ripple effects throughout the ecosystem as a whole. As the crab population declined, the shorebirds weren't finding food, and then over the next few years, gradually the shorebirds started to crash. I worked for the Department of Environmental Protection starting in 1985. And back then, when you walked out to the beaches here, all you would see during the migration and the horseshoe crab spawn was either crabs or birds. You couldn't even see the beach. It was amazing, right? And then, because of the, you know, the harvest of horseshoe crabs and a lot of things that were happening on the bay, uh, we, had, we saw less horseshoe crabs, and we saw less horseshoe crab eggs, and we saw less birds. So we went from, in Delaware Bay, we went from about 90,000 red knots in the 90s to the low was about uh, 12,000 here. Preserving ecological systems is about more than saving wildlife. People are a part of nature, and the people who live on Delaware Bay face some of the most significant economic disadvantages in the state. By working with these communities to restore Delaware Bay, we're all learning the real value of the place and of the animals and plants that call it home. Yeah, right now you could buy a crab uh, for bait for maybe $5, $8. That blood is worth $200. See, what we want to do is confer that value to the communities of Delaware Bay. There used to be a lot of resources coming out of the bay that were supporting communities. And uh, now, uh, you know, most things are lost. But see, here's a resource that could help the people of Delaware Bay. Conserve Wildlife Foundation and American Mineral Society had long worked to strengthen the region's natural resources. But then came Hurricane Sandy. We'll look at how we met that challenge head on and came out of it in position to make the Bayshore stronger than ever. Next time on New Jersey's Hidden Coast.